Mr. Mr. Speaker, l let me start on, on Zimbabwe, where I believe, um, as on uh, some of the other issues raised, there is uh, co common ground. It was a major breakthrough at the G8 uh, that the Russians and other countries agreed that we should impose uh, sanctions uh, on, on Zimbabwe. And it was a major breakthrough that they agreed uh, that there should be a UN envoy uh, goes to Zimbabwe. Uh, the Secretary General was at the G8 and wants to do that immediately. Uh, and it was a major breakthrough uh, that, uh, that people agree that uh, off the, um, uh, in the sanctions, we should start with the major figures of the Mugabe regime. And I don't deny that the European Union has a wider list, but the, the prize of having internationally agreed sanctions right across the world to deal with assets held in Africa, assets we know are held in Asia, perhaps assets held in other parts uh, of uh, Europe which are outside the European Union by members of the Mugabe regime, uh, that will be a major prize. Now, I accept that the United Nations resolutions goes further in, in, in two major respects, and therefore we have detailed negotiations that are taking place uh, in New York at the moment, but I hope the whole international community, having seen the statement of the G8, having seen the statement of the African Union about the Ill illegitimacy of the election process, will now agree that they should together uh, take the action that we are proposing, sanctions, uh, and of course uh, the embargo that would happen on, on arms, and the envoy going uh, to Zimbabwe. Uh, now, it is um, a very delicate um, situation. Uh, because there is violence being practiced at the moment against members not just of the community in Zimbabwe but members of the opposition party who have a legitimate claim to having won the elections uh, for the parliament. Uh, I think it's very important that we support what mediation efforts are taking place but it's also very important that the whole weight of the international community is behind the efforts to secure a transition uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, I believe that uh, time is short for doing that and it is very important that the UN pass its resolution as soon as possible, and I hope that all countries and all continents will come, come behind it. Uh, the second uh, issue that, um, that the uh, right honourable gentleman raised uh, was, was climate change. I, I do have to disagree with him here. I think it is major progress uh, that um, the uh, major countries, including uh, America, but also including uh, the rest of the European Union uh, and Japan, have now signed up uh, to an international agreement uh, that, if agreed, would mean that there would be a cut of 50% uh, in carbon emissions by 2050. That did not happen a year ago. It has obviously not been possible for, for many years in the discussions we've had on climate change. For that to happen at this summit is an important uh, step forward. What was also an important step forward, and I, I don't think he properly appreciated that in his comments, that was, there was agreement that there would be a need for interim uh, targets, 2020-2025. Uh, there was a suggestion that countries should provide their national plans uh, to do so. So we are not just, if you like, putting forward uh, proposals that there be targets set that have to be met uh, by our children's generation, but targets that have to be met by this generation uh, as well. Now, I think uh, the developing countries are now more ready to sign up to mitigation efforts and to sign up to their own standards for meeting the climate change agenda. That will be part of the talks that are now about to take place, including all the different summits that are going to take place in the run-up to uh, uh, Copenhagen, including a very full discussion at the next G8 meeting with the major economies that I've just listed on these uh, climate change issues. But what makes it possible for developing countries uh, and for emerging markets now to sign up to targets, in my view, is something that I don't think has yet properly been recognised as an outcome of this summit, and that is the $150 billion or so dollars that is now being made available through the World Bank as part of private-public partnerships to enable these countries to invest in alternatives to coal-fired power stations, alternatives to deforestation, so that they can uh, invest long-term in sources of energy that are more uh, environmentally efficient. So I believe on the climate change agenda we have made uh, major uh, progress. Uh, and I also uh, believe that it is very important, and he raised this issue about the European uh, Union, it is very important in doing so that we recognise that Europe is leading this debate. You can only lead this debate if you're part of Europe. You can only lead this debate if you're playing your full part as a member yeah, of the European yeah, Union. Yeah. And I hope at some point at least the sensible voices in the Conservative Party Rotten. will wake up to this. <laughs> as, far as, as far as food prices are concerned, uh, he, is, he is absolutely right. Uh, we have proposed major changes in the common agricultural policy. It is up for review uh, this year. It is part of the budget settlement uh, that was part of the uh, settlement that was made about uh, the budgets uh, over the last uh, few years. 
and I hope that other members of the European community can be persuaded of the need for major reform in the common agricultural policy. But we need to act on famine now, and that's why there is additional money being provided by all G8 member countries to deal with the famines that now exist in Africa and elsewhere as a result of rising food prices. And we need to invest in what is the equivalent of a green revolution in Africa to complement what happened in Asia so that Africa ceases to be a net importer of food but with a population, most of whom are dependent on the land, they start to become a net, net exporter of food, which is to the benefit of them, of course, in raising their earnings, but also to the benefit of the rest of the world in reducing the food shortages. And more and more, we see the development agenda, the environmental agenda, and the economic agenda coming together. And it would make no sense, as I've said to, to other countries uh, who are looking at the development aid budgets at the moment, it would make no sense for them to cut development aid at the moment, because that is needed both to help Africa with the agricultural agenda, but also to help it with the environmental agenda. I, I disagree with him also when he says that we have not done enough on uh, the Millennium uh, Development Goals at this, um, at this summit. Uh, it is true. It is true. No, it is. It, it is true. It is true that there is a legitimate. It is true there is a legitimate debate. It is true there is a legitimate debate between the countries about what the level of development aid. He said that countries were not meeting their commitments to the 2010 targets. We, Britain, are meeting our commitments. It is right to tell other countries they should also meet their commitments, and that is why we try to turn from abstract, abstract promises of the past into concrete commitments what was being said on health, what is being said on malaria, what is being said on education and what is being said on agriculture and dealing with the problems of, of food. And I come to the world economy. I hope he has understood the message that has come out of this G8 summit, that while we can do a great, <laughs> while we can do a great, deal, while we can do a great deal in our own countries, and we have uh, raised the winter fuel allowance, we have frozen fuel duty, we do have responsibilities to the environmental agenda, as he used to recognise, and that's why we're dealing with pollution in cars, that there are global problems now that require global solutions. Their blindness to the need for cooperation in the European Union means they do not recognise the need for global action in the way we do. We will continue to work for global cooperation to deal with food, to deal with oil, to deal with commodities and to make for a smoother functioning global economy and I hope all parties will come to recognise